right resolve. The Pali term, Samma Sangapo, is sometimes translated as right thought. And although the word Sankapo is a little bit more purposeful than ordinary thinking, it does raise an important issue. How purposeful is your thinking as you go through the day? All too often we've, we simply follow what's entertaining, what happens to pop into our minds. We latch on to things without really thinking. What is the purpose? of thinking anyhow. You'll notice in the path, when the Buddha lays out the factors, right resolve follows on right view. In other words, when you realize that the suffering that's weighing down your mind comes from the mind's own activities, the right response is to look carefully at those activities and say you want to get some order established among them. You want them to be devoted to the purpose of putting an end to suffering. That means marshalling your thoughts, sorting them out, being really clear when you're thinking about something, why you're thinking about it, where it's going to go. Right resolve is followed by right speech. And this is one test. What are the kinds of things you tend to be talking about? What comes into your mind very quickly goes out your mouth. What the mind is concerned with, as the Buddha noted many times, will then determine the kinds of things you like to talk about. So look at yourself as you go through the day. Do you like to talk about the themes of right resolve? In other words, do you like to talk about the themes of renunciation, non-ill will, harmlessness? If not, it's a sign you have to look more carefully into the mind. What are you thinking about as you go through the day? Why can't you be thinking more about these terms? What are the things you'd rather be thinking about? And look carefully into why. After all, the power of thought does rule your heart, rules your mind, rules your life. And if you want to stay on the path, this is one of the big ways of staying on the path, is by marshalling your thoughts. And understanding what the purpose of right resolve is. It's to bring into being all the other factors of the path, and especially right concentration. There's a very clear connection between the two. There's one point where the Buddha talks about mundane right resolve and noble right resolve. Mundane right resolve is just that, being resolved on renunciation, non-ill will, in other words, goodwill, harmlessness, in other words, compassion. And then noble right resolve is the direct thought and evaluation of the first jhana. So the way you're thinking, the way you're thinking should be aimed at how you can bring the mind into stillness. So look at your thoughts as you go through the day. Are they intent, tending towards stillness? Or are they tending someplace else? Are they scattered around? Renunciation doesn't simply mean reminding yourself that sensual pleasures are not all the things you want to look for in life, or even the primary things you want to look for in life. It's not just the sensual pleasures, but it's also anything coming through the senses that you would find pleasing. And that involves relationships, involves the way you like society to be, all the kinds of things that are looking for happiness, looking for pleasure outside. You have to keep reminding yourself that that kind of pleasure is unreliable. It's going to set you up for a fall. You're making your pleasure depend on things that don't really belong to you. 
that are not really in your power. And the thoughts of renunciation simply don't stop right there. They turn around and say, well, what can I find inside that would create a greater sense of well-being? And this is where your thoughts of renunciation do become more noble. In other words, you're focused on the direct of thought and evaluation. How do I get to understand my breath? How do I get to understand whatever it is that I'm going to take as my object for concentration and adjust it in a way, adjust the mind in a way, so that the object and the mind fit together and there's a sense of well-being, intense rightness for just being here. That's the kind of thing you should be thinking about, not only as you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but as you go through the day. Same with thoughts and non-ill will. You give a good will for all beings. And think about what that means. The highest level of goodwill is when you wish for each person to find true happiness. And to some extent you can be helpful for other people's happiness, but there's a lot that they're going to have to do on their own, and there's a lot that you're going to have to do on your own, too. Beginning with getting the mind in right concentration. So here's a way of showing your true goodwill for yourself. Just trying to figure out, how do I get the mind to settle down? The same with harmlessness. The most harmless happiness is the happiness that comes when you don't have to take anything away from anyone else. And concentration is the ideal happiness in that way. It's not 100% independent from the world around you, but it's heading in the right direction. So this is where your thoughts should be aimed as you go through the day. How can I get the mind to settle down? How can I get the mind to be still? And all the other issues you carry around from the world, you carry around from your family, your work, you have to see them as wrong resolve. Dwelling on those things is not going to solve the issue of the pain and suffering you cause for yourself. The issue is solved by creating a sense of well-being inside from which you can then look at things and gain some insight into how the mind creates unnecessary suffering, and how that unnecessary suffering is the only thing that really weighs the mind down. So our right resolve points in here, right here at the breath, right here at the mind. figure out how to bring them together. And it should be the primary principle that you use as you go through the day. And of course, there are other issues you have to think about in terms of your chores, your responsibilities. But so much of the mental chatter that goes on in the mind is not really related to anything necessary at all. So when you find the mind wandering off into things that are not going to lead to its true happiness. You've got to bring it back. You have to have some principles in your thinking. You have to be resolved on how you're going to use your mind. That's what it keeps pointing out. One of the best ways to use your mind is to figure out how to bring it to stillness. I was listening to a strange teaching the other day, someone saying that Samasangapo, which he translated as right thought, doesn't mention no thought. And therefore, the Buddha always wants us to think as we meditate. He doesn't want us to stop thinking. And that's true that it's a good antidote to the idea that meditation is nothing but not thinking. But the ability to get the mind not to think is one of the important skills that we're going to master. We have to master. Here again, the Buddha points this out in many places. The 
there's a passage where he says that if you think skillful thoughts all day and night, it may not cause any unskillful behavior on your part, but it will be tiring to the mind. It was with that thought that he brought the mind first into the first jhana, and then from there into the second and the third and the fourth. In the second jhana, there's no direct thought, there's no evaluation. And as he stated in another place, that's where skillful resolves all cease. It's a passage where he talks about first what unskillful resolves are, in other words, being resolved on sensuality. We don't think we're resolved on sensuality, but we let our thoughts wander into that area all the time. That's what we're resolved on. Resolved on sensuality, resolved on ill will, resolved on harmfulness. That's unskillful resolves. Then where do unskillful resolves cease with that remainder? Well, in the first jhana. But then he says, even better than that, where do skillful resolves cease with that remainder? And that's in the second jhana. In other words, you use your direct thought and evaluation to get the mind snugly with the object. Like one of those Chinese puzzles where the pieces of wood are fit together very nicely, very precisely. So it feels just right to be here. And then you drop all that other thinking and just maintain that sense of just rightness. There will be a perception going on in the mind that says breath, 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 or still, or here, here, or whatever keeps you here. But it's a very simple perception. There's no discursive thought going on at all. The mind really does get a sense of rest and energy from that. And from the second jhana, of course, we can go deeper. So it's not the case that the Buddha would not have us think. Right resolve is aimed at getting the mind to a place where it can not think. And then you have the skill, as he says, to think the thoughts that you want to think and not think the thoughts that you don't want to think. You have the skill both of skillful thinking and skillful not thinking. That's when you've used your right resolves in the right way.